tell us about the journey coming back to comedy now, 20, 20-something years later. Yeah, you know that, um, well, I, I started in the 80s uh, making crazy comedies. But in the streets in, in Madrid, people really demand me to go back to the comedy genre. And uh, I felt like, but really like that, I mean, because the ask to walk is the only exercise that I do. Um, uh, and when I talk with many, well, with many people. So they, there is something, there is a line that they repeat uh, that is, uh, I mean, they, uh, I love your uh, latest movies, but you know, Pedro, uh, you make us laughing so much. Uh, and I felt really, uh, really embarrassed. Uh, because it's like, I mean, if you have, um, como si fueras un carnicero y la, gente, y la gente entra a tu, al comercio para decirte ay pero había una carne que usted hacía que traía en el pasado y que me gustaba tanto y and, and people would come into the butcher shop and, and say oh there was a, there was a kind of meat you had in the past and I really really like that and can you get that back in again sí el problema es que al menos en mi caso eh, no puedo hacer una comedia simplemente por desearlo and I can't, in my case, I can't simply go back to just making a comedy because I know how to make a comedy. Eh, necesitaba una idea, un I guion. need an idea. Eh, y bueno, la idea de, de, esta, de esta película que habéis de ver, eh, la tuve como hace unos cinco años. And the idea for this film, I had about five years ago. I write more like a novelist, more than an, like an, an screenwriter. Because first I had one idea, eh, after I took a lot of notes, thousands of notes, and uh, so I live with many stories at the same time. Mm. Um, now, for example, in, in my desk, I lead with at least five different stories, and one of them will be the next movie. And so I was living with this story like five years, and it was changing a lot and, uh, till the last minute. Because basically, you know, just to make the first draft, is just to be free, uh, to be very crazy, above all if it's a comedy, and, um, and after, just, is just to rewrite, mm -hmm. to rewrite a lot of times. This is at least my way of working. And 25 years, Madrid's changed, you've changed a little bit. Everything changed, I mean, not only Madrid, Spain changed, uh, the world, the entire world uh, changed a lot. But, any, but anyway, I try to situate myself in the same mood than when I was writing my earlier movies in the 80s. And um, just, just to be sure if I could, I mean, even, even I don't think this is exactly one, one of the movies that I made at that period, but I tried to just to get the tone, to connect uh, with, with a tone that it was very familiar for me and, and, I, and um, that I felt uh, in an easy way. Uh, so I think that tone appeared when I, when I call, him, call him or call it. Uh, but of course, the movie is not like uh, the movies that I, that I did at that moment. And at the end, you know, the, at the end is like um, a tribute to the decade of the 80s, that it was uh, very important uh, for the Spanish people. And uh, it was the beginning of the democracy and also it was the beginning of my career. And the, perhaps what I was trying as making a comedy looking like that period, it was in summarizing, I mean, a way for me to, to look, I mean, just trying to be young. Mm -hmm. But I didn't get it. You know, this is always an illusion. Because of course, I mean, 33 years ago, um, I could do many things because the, not only Spain, but also I was, I was very young. And the, uh, comparing to the situation that lives, in, uh, that lives in Spain in this moment, I don't want to be on to sound nostalgic, but um, it's a way also to say that the situation now is much worse than, than before, than that moment. Uh, so in, in the movie there is the, the type of behavior that I was very familiar, and uh, the type of drugs that we have at the moment, uh, in, in, even the combination, I mean, the Agua de Valencia, and... <clears throat> the Valencian cocktail, as it's called. Yeah, and um, the mescaline. Mm -hmm. um, it was, uh, in the, 
in the middle 80s, it was a, a com very hot combination. And uh, it was wonderful at that moment. <laughs> it produces wonderful results in the film as well. Yeah, when people drink know, the cocktail, they become something else. You very easy with that. You socialize, I mean, you talk with everyone. Everyone looks like interesting. No one is dull. And also at the moment of sex is very stimulating. So uh, it was wonderful. They will all want to try it now. So I think one of the things that's so wonderful about the film is the dynamic between the characters. And you have a wonderful cast in the film. And I'm, uh, especially I was struck by Javier Camara, who, of course, was, was also in, in Talk to Her and, and Bad Education in very different roles. Yep. I mean, did you write the role for him? Yes. In this case, there is only two characters that I, that I have in my mind. One is what Javier, Javier's, and the other one, Lola Dueñas. Mm -hmm. This kind plays of a psychic. virgin, the psychic that that is a virgin that but desperately wants um, to have sex. Yes, to lose <laughs> her virginity. Yeah, yes, <laughs> um, and they, I also thought about her because she's it's, it's, it's an actress that I that I know, mm. and the, this is one of the more difficult uh, characters in the movie. It's very difficult just to go there. I mean, just to the cockpit and say it. You know, I know things. What well, this is typical, just yes, to, to say, I know things, I feel things, I, you know, I have this kind of power, but also I'm a virgin. <laughs> but uh, Lola knows how to say that. She's also a great comedian. She's a wonderful Yeah, it's a comedian. great, great. You know that she really believed in what she was doing. Mm. And uh, she start, started always in, during the rehearsal uh, like, como se dice, entra, est, est, entraba en trance. She entered almost into a, well, entered into a trance. Uh, and, uh, bueno, es peculiar el hecho de que ella se conecte con el más allá a través de los paquetes de los hombres. It's a little bueno, bit peculiar. Virgen, los hombres, es normal que esté obsesionada con los paquetes. <laughs> it's a bit peculiar that she should, uh, she should reach the, uh, the otherworldly through uh, a certain part of the male anatomy, shall we say. Uh, but, um, but it's true that, I mean, here in, the, in that sequence of the cockpit, that when she says, oh, no, it was true that it was just uh, re uh, getting away from the trance. Mm. So it's, uh, and it's fantastic to have someone that really believe uh, and behave like the character. What is the best flight you've ever been on and whether that was an influence for you on the, on the film? The, no, todos los vuelos que, que yo he hecho han sido, afortunadamente, bastante aburridos. No, fortunately, um, pretty much all the flights I've been on have been boring. Cuando uno coge un avión, hay dos fantasías opuestas, takes... pero presentes, eh, que uno es el sexo y la muerte. When one takes a flight, there are two fantasies that, that kind of coexist. They're, they're opposites, but they're both there. One is death and one is sex. How long did you rehearse for? ¿Cuánto tiempo ensayaste um, pues unos tres, like, like three months uh, during the pre-production. Because, you know, it's, uh, it is the first time that I, that I shoot in such a little place and with so many characters. Uh, so I didn't want uh, just to go to the, well, of course, in the studio, to go to the studio and try uh, to find out what kind of shooting, shoot. Uh, we are going to do uh, that day. So I, um, uh, I rehearsed the whole thing um, in, my, in my office. I put uh, yes, the chairs. Uh, and almost I choreograph, choreography, choreographie. I uh, choreographed. Uh, everything. Um, I mean, the dialogues, the rhythm. Uh, because, I mean, you, you don't speak Spanish, but really, I mean, the, 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 the 80 percent of the actors depends on the way they talk and with the tempo they talk. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, that, that I have that very clear um, before going to this, to this small place. Um, but basically with this, that, that, that is almost like a, like a theater play, then is, it was very convenient. I just wondered if you could talk about the um, amazing Pointer Sisters scene. I, I wanted to have a, a son um, in the movie. Uh, I didn't know exactly what son. 
But um, when, I, when I finished the script, and uh, we sent it to the international distributor, um, well, then we discovered that uh, Los Avantes Pasajeros, uh, it, it doesn't have a good uh, English um, translation. Because uh, passengers in Spanish has a double, everything in Spanish has a double or triple <laughs> exception or meaning. Uh, means something that has an ending that is not eternal, and also someone that is traveling. Uh, in, it, in, in, in Italian and in French has the same meaning, but not in, not in English. So then, as I, was, as I was looking for one song, then I thought, well, I'm so excited, it's perfect, because also represent really the spirit of this passenger. And, and also, I, I wanted definitely uh, to have a disco music song, uh, because it was the type of music for the three stewards that they, they were, if you didn't notice, it's openly gay and very <laughs> flamboyant. Uh, so this song meant a lot uh, for them. Um, uh, and, uh, and I didn't, wa I didn't want to use, I mean, like very cliche song, like I will survive or type of, but I, I wanted some a disco, a disco song. And I think it was perfect for the title for the English title, and also for the mood uh, and the temperature um, <laughs> of, the, of, the, of the plane. There's a question from Fran McDonald about um, talking about collaborating with Alberto Iglesias, who, of course, has worked with you composing music for your films for a long time now. What's it like? How do you work with, with Alberto? When does he see a film? Really, I mean, I, I work with him like with an actor. Uh, but, in, I mean, in this case, I don't know the language of music. Uh, but really, Alberto is so generous and so, such a nice guy that he understands me, everything that I said, mm. even, uh, even without, I mean, with my ignorance in the, in the, in the, just in the vocabulary uh, of someone that composed music. Mm. So, uh, I mean, he knows me very well. Um, and uh, with the time, uh, he really understand the movie since the very beginning, since the first uh, editing, very deeply. And also, um, we talk a lot during the editing. Um, and, uh, you know, every, every movie is, is different. Uh, sometimes he has to repeat many times uh, a theme, and he experiments different types of music, uh, just, just trying to offer me different options. Um, so, I mean, he works a lot, really, uh, I think more than usually. Uh, but also, I gave him, uh, or I give him always more time than is usual for, for one uh, movie. I mean, you know, the, the, the musician has a short time uh, just to create mm. uh, the music. Because then, I mean, you give them, you give them uh, the, the movie when it's finished. Mm. And then everything is in a hurry just to make the mixing. So, but I you know with Alberto, I, I mean, it takes like four months of, of working and he likes to, to, to work like that. Uh, so here, I mean, it's the first comedy that he creates. And, um, but he was since the beginning, he was very close to what I wanted. Not exactly doing Henry Mancini, which is like the obvious mm -hmm. reference if you make a crazy mm -hmm. comedy, uh, but incorporating like there is a lot of uh, bossa, mm -hmm. uh, mixing with some jazzy moments. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it looks like like you are in a hotel and there is a like someone uh, playing the piano. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm, so, uh, I'm very, very rich, I mean, and he's really with me risk also a lot. And um, no, I'm very, I'm very, very happy with, with his work. In general, I think it, it was, for me, it was uh, essential to, to find someone like Alberto in the flower of my secret. Yeah.